Heisenberg woke in the middle of the night. His fever had broken and his mind was exceptionally clear. He stood up from the bed and dressed mechanically, feeling himself totally alienated from his body. He approached his desk, opened his notebook, and saw that he had finished every one of his matrices, though he did not know how he had constructed half of them. He took his coat and walked out into the cold. There were no stars in the sky, only clouds lit by the moon. But his eyes had become so used to darkness after long days shut away that he was able to proceed with absolute certainty. He followed the route towards the cliff, immune to the cold, and when he reached the highest point of the island, he saw a soft glow over the horizon, even though the dawn was hours away. The radiance came not from the sun, but from the earth itself and Heisenberg thought that perhaps it was the glare of an enormous city, but he knew the nearest one was more than a hundred kilometres to the west. There was no way for that light to reach him, and yet he could see it. Sitting with his face exposed to the wind, whipped up from the sea, he opened his notebook and reviewed his matrices, so nervous that he committed one error after another and had to start over again from the beginning. When he proved that the first was coherent, he could feel his body again. During the second, his hand shook from the cold. His pencil left tiny marks on the paper above and below his calculations. As if he had resorted to the symbols of an unknown language, his matrices were all consistent. Heisenberg had modelled a quantum system based totally on direct observation. He had replicated in the subatomic world what Newton had done for the solar system, using only pure mathematics, with no recourse to imagery. He had no idea how he had arrived at his results, but there they were, written in his own hand. If he was correct, science could not only understand reality, but begin to manipulate it at its most basic level. Heisenberg thought of the consequences knowledge of this nature might have and was struck with a feeling of vertigo so profound that he had to restrain the impulse to throw his notebook into the sea. He felt he was looking past atomic phenomena, towards a new sort of beauty. Too agitated to sleep, he walked towards a boulder jutting directly over the water. He climbed to the top and sat down to wait for the sunrise with his legs dangling over the edge, listening to the waves beating against the rocks down below.